Welcome back to another episode of the Day to Day with Dajan podcast, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly inspiring to be able to continue to chase this dream. Not only that, I think it's truly inspirational that I get to hear from some of you all in the real world and how my podcast has impacted your life. And it's truly an inspiration to me. And it's the reason why I can find the motivation to keep going. And that's one of the reasons why I also started this podcast in the first place. And, you know, I think it's truly inspiring to hear from the ladies and the gents. And, you know, it seems to be doing the podcast seems to be doing exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm extremely grateful for that. And, you know, that's what this episode is really going to be about today is just relationships, you know, platonically and romantically. And to help you dissect some of the things that we all go through in our lives as far as external challenges. And this all started when I did some self-reflection of my week and my main goal is to impact humanity in a positive light. So I went back and, you know, I looked over some past few um, interactions and, you know, I came to the realization and I had to ask myself a question and it was, do I believe people enjoy being miserable? Now, after going down that rabbit hole, you know, I came to the realization that people we think enjoy being miserable are people who want to be desired and loved, valued and understood. This is why I believe misery loves company. Now, I know we all have taken advice from individuals in our life that we find out are miserable and I understand why it makes sense now because I know how I felt when when I was younger in high school and I wasn't desired in long after that. And I'm not the only man or person on the planet that has that problem because, you know, when people can't feel desired or feel loved, they rather feel hated. And that's the world we're living in today. And by no means am I telling you to make excuses for somebody's behavior, because I want to let you know right now, never take advice from someone you wouldn't take constructive criticism from. I think that's I think that's important to know. Robert Frost said love is an irresistible desire to be irresistibly desired. Now, if you can't be desired, what are you going to do? How are you going to act? And in this, in this state, we find ourselves in misery. Now, what is misery? Misery is a state or feeling of great distress or discomfort of mind and body. But let's get a little bit deeper than that. Okay. So what is distress? Because it's in the definition. Distress is extreme anxiety, sorrow, or pain. So now we know that misery, someone who is miserable, is in, is has extreme anxiety or in extreme anxiety, is sorrow or in pain. So, and let me, let me let you in, gentlemen, let me let you in on a little secret that I came across a little bit too late and my own experiences. And I want to tell you this so that you can adjust and make the proper corrections because most of the time we fall short of things that we just don't know how to fix. We just don't have the knowledge. And I came across this knowledge when it was far too late for me to use it. And I'm going to share that with you. And I, I do believe this burden falls on your back and you know, What it is, is I found out that people with anxiety and depression can't remember a lot because they're too busy focusing on how to get through each moment. So they don't actually experience what is going on or happening to them in that moment. Causing them not to form the memory they were supposed to. Now, it's easy to look for the signs as far as blank stares. And, you know, when you talk about things and they can't hardly remember and it just happened or, you know, it just happened a couple of days ago and they can't seem to remember. And then it's because this person is in extreme distress, sorrow or pain or anxiety. They're in a place of misery, whether they want to admit it or not. And that could be before you walked into their life. So. 
So in by by me being an autodidact, I taught myself what to watch and listen for. And I can also teach you these things in my mentorship program called Men of Honor or Daydreams Academy or Daydreams Blueprint. It can be found on my website, which I will have attached in the description below for you all. And, you know, what what matters is, too, is, of course, how to locate these things. Well, or where misery comes from. Do you know what the common cause of misery is in today's society? It's our expectations. That's what it boils down to. And your expectations are not someone else's. So it's hard for us to escape our minds because that is the greatest battle you will ever have to fight. So now that we broke down what misery is, how do you typically respond to feelings of misery? This is a question you have to ask yourself. And based off that answer, do you expect anyone to just know that about you? Now, ask yourself, should individuals be held morally responsible for actions they commit under extreme emotional distress? Because I can tell you one thing, the world doesn't need more hate. The world needs more understanding. And that's what we like. We lack the, the, the knowledge and the understanding. We have to be quick to understand and so to judge. Because there's always something to learn from that experience. Because before somebody is angry, they are hurt. So once you boil down to those reasons, the most important question you should ask yourself is what steps can I take to address and alleviate feelings of misery in a healthy and constructive manner? And I can give you the easiest answer to that question. The easiest answer to that question, and I believe is the only answer, is to love yourself first. So I say it again, Luke chapter 17, 20, verse 20 to 21, the kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation, nor shall they say, look here or look there for behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You have to look within. Winning the battles within yourself is the first step. And only then can you effectively face external challenges. It's not fair for someone else to tear down walls they did not help you create. Before you can love somebody else, you have to love yourself. Before you can be kind to somebody else, you have to love, you have to be kind to yourself. Before you can be patient with somebody else, and we need to be patient. I struggle with that. You have to be patient with yourself. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every practice. That's some wisdom for you right there. So I'm going to say it again. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exists, there will be disorder in every practice. How can you fight that external challenge if you are in disorder yourself? Ladies and gents, let me tell you something. It is your birthright to enjoy a relationship rooted in genuine love. It's your birthright to have that. It is also your birthright to experience a romance beyond what you can read about. But first, you have to do the inner work. That's most important. And I'm going to preach that to the day I die. Where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every practice. Is love not a practice? Don't you have to choose that person every day? Don't you have an obligation to them on good or bad terms? That's what a relationship is, a conscious one at that. Isn't love the commitment to my time and energy even when I don't feel like it? Let's go even deeper. 
So I'm going to say it again. Don't you have to choose that person every day? Don't you choose to go to work every day? Don't you have an obligation to them on good or bad terms? Don't you have an obligation to your work on good or bad terms? No matter how you feel, you have to get your job done. Isn't love the commitment to my time and energy even when I don't feel like it? Isn't what you do for a living a commitment to your time and energy even when you don't feel like it? So it's something that we practice already. We just don't practice them with each other. Did you know a healthy relationship will help you show up in your work life? And a healthy work life will help you show up in your personal life? Did you also know that a healthy relationship slows the aging process? And a stressful one speeds it up. We have to escape this machine. Past the illusion of life. And if not, you will be stuck in the circumference of misery. So let's backtrack for a moment because I know that, you know, I had dropped some wisdom on you earlier, but I want to tell you or give you my solution to how to deal with jealousy and selfish ambition. And I said it once and I'll say it again. Luke 17, Luke chapter 17, verse 20 to 21. The kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, look here or look there, for behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It all starts with you. In anything you do, in any practice you do, it all starts from you. I'm going to tell you a quick story. A gentleman stopped me the other day and I used to go to church with him. And I asked him, you know, where he's been. And he told me that he switched churches and now he goes to a church more centered in marriage counseling. And I said, oh, okay. And then he went on about his story on why he on why he made that choice. And he went on, he said that he was married for 20 plus years and his relationship suddenly hit or his marriage hit a rough patch. He said the walls felt like they were caving in and there was nothing he can do. So he went to a marriage counselor and I believe that this counselor was Christian based from the same church. And the counselor said, Hey, do you pray for her? And he said, yes. And he asked her the same question. Do you pray for him? And she said, yes. He was like, No. He then said. Do you hear. Each other's prayers for each other. They both said no. He said, well, let me. He said, well, try something new. I want you to pray for her out loud and I want her to hear it and vice versa. And he said, "Okay." So. They went home. And she started praying for him out loud. He had to look around because he felt like he wasn't the person that she was praying for. It's kind of deep. And once he can hear what she was praying for, he can then become that person. She was speaking life over him that he felt like he had lost. It's 
it's easy to think someone has given up on you. And what makes a relationship hard is you will never know what the other person is thinking. You will never know. And I know a lot of people believe in hope. And I want to tell you something about hope. Hope is like this sign. If you believe in it only when you see it, you will never make it through the night. You got to have faith. I want to read this quote to you from Malcolm X. And he said, armed with the knowledge of our past, we can with confidence charter a course for our future. You have to leverage your lived experiences and the knowledge of our past to make a better future for ourselves. But that comes with awareness and awareness comes with doing the inner work. And I'm ended on that note. And that is my time, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed this video, show some love by liking and following and subscribing. And also, you'll find my handles in the description below. And don't miss out on my content on my website, which I will also have in the description below. But other than that, I'll see you in the real world. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Day to Day with Adrian Podcast. I really hope that it left you inspired and informed. And I really hope that it left you ready to take on new challenges. If you enjoyed what you heard today, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave a review because it's your feedback that helps me keep going. And I want to say thank you for being the best part of my podcast community. I could not be here without you guys. And with that being said, goodbye for now.